seems to be pretty up to date. For this, it's definitely better than ChatGPT. OpenAI just got some real competition. In Tropic, the company behind the Quad LLM just released their second version called Quad 2. And it has features similar to GPT-4, including code interpreter, but it's absolutely free. You can get access to some of the premium features that GPT-4 offers, but without paying a single penny if you are in UK or US. Now, one great thing about this product is that it has a context window of 100,000 tokens. GPT's 4 context window is 8,000 tokens for the version that is available to public. With this new update, Claude is definitely a real competitor to GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. In this video, I will show you how to access the model and play around with it. So Claude 2 has improved performance, longer responses, and it can be accessed via API. And they also have this public facing beta website that we're going to look at. I think you still need to pay for API access though, similar to, to OpenAI's models. Now, according to them, their model scored 76.5% on multiple choice section of the bar exam, which is around 3% better than the previous version. GPT-4 had very similar performance on the bar exam. Now, Claude has great reading and writing capabilities, so it scored about the 90th percentile on the GRD reading and writing exams. And its abilities when it came to quantitative reasoning are very similar to the median applicant. Again, this is very similar to what GPT-4 is able to do. Businesses will be able to use the Cloud2 API. And the price is very similar to the previous version. Looking at these performance numbers, this definitely seemed to be a decent alternative to OpenAI's models. However, one thing that really sets it apart from OpenAI's models is this 100,000 tokens context window. This means that you can directly feed it uh, with hundreds of pages of technical documentation or even a book and Cloud2 will be able to process the data. This context windows length is more than three times of the 32K version of GPT-4, but that's not publicly available. Okay, before testing this ourselves, let's look at a couple of examples that they have. So it's long inputs, multi-step output. So basically here we are looking at a 24 page document and one capability that this one uh, model has that uh, GPT-4 doesn't have that you can upload multiple documents at the same time. So here they're uploading two different papers. In the first part of the prompt they were asking, can you explain the importance of the first included paper describing its exciting new results to me in simple terms. And for the second paper, and for the second paper, they are asking for a two column markdown table, which highlights details from each section. So basically, they are dragging two papers, right? And as I said, GPT-4 can accept only one file at a time using its code interpreter. And then right away, it's actually able to generate the responses for both questions. Another capability that they are highlighting is its ability to do coding. So it went from 56% in the previous version to 72% on the Codex Human Evolved dataset. And it seems like they plan to release more capabilities for Cloud2. The second example that we're going to be looking at is coding with Cloud, adding interactive data to a static map. So basically, uh, they are uploading Node.js file, which is going to create this static map. So first they're asking Cloud to analyze the original static code. So they're simply uploading the uh, file, and then Cloud is able to identify the contents of the file and kind of summarize what is actually in the file. Now, next, they are asking Claude to actually look at the file and add a completely new feature into the existing code. Wow, it was actually able to add the interactive components. Okay, once you sign up, you're going to be presented with a page like this. As you can see, I have been playing around with it, so it kind of keeps track of your uh, conversation, way similar to what ChatGPT does, However, the interface is very different from what OpenAI has. Now at the top, if you see, uh, you can type in your message in here. And with that, you see this attachment uh, icon. So you can add up to five uh, files and that each can be up to uh, 10 megabytes. That is actually pretty generous. Given that the code interpreter with GPT-4 gives you the ability to upload only one file at a time, and you have to pay $20 in order to use that. 
uh, there are some examples here uh, at the bottom of the page. So let's uh, first check one of these out. So it says summarize this PDF document in a bullet point outline. So here you see the document and then it actually starts generating the response. And the speed of generation is actually really good. That's uh, real time. If you have access to GPT-4, it does take a while to start generating responses. Now, very similar to ChatGPT or GPT-4, and actually included uh, a summary or a title for your uh, chat or conversation, and you can go and rename it if you want. I actually like the interface and its simplicity. Also, if you click on this, so it will show you the contents of the uh, documents that you uploaded. And it's here tells you that it uh, extracted 70 lines from this document. Okay, so let's go back and let's create another chat. All right, let's see how good this is at programming and analyzing your existing code bases. Okay, so I'm gonna click on this attachment button and here I'm going to upload this in just.py file. So here is uh, what I'm asking it to do, analyze this code, explain what it does, and what potential improvements can be made to this code. So let's see what it comes up with. All right, so it was actually able to correctly identify uh, different components and operations that are happening inside the code. I ran a similar uh, test with GPT-4's code interpreter, and it gave me similar results. So it's able to identify uh, that this is loading uh, different types of documents, so it gets the overall functionality, functionality of the code right. Let's look at some suggested potential improvements. Uh, so it's uh, suggesting to use either dataset or rate to parallelize the operation. That's actually a good suggestion. Could store uh, source documents themselves in document store like Elasticsearch to enable keyword search. Uh, this is a good suggestion, but not applicable directly to the code base. I think probably it doesn't have the whole context of what exactly is going on because it's just one file from a whole project. Now, ingestion and embedding steps can be split out. That's actually a good suggestion that can be implemented and add more robust error handling. Okay, this is good. All right, so next, uh, I asked it to include error handling in the code, and it actually did a pretty good job. Uh, it updated only the part of the uh, code that needed error handling. So this is pretty neat. And it also gave me a summary of what exactly did it do. But this is actually pretty great. Um, keep in mind that a very similar feature was added to GPT-4 just a week ago. And you get that here for absolutely free. Okay, let's see if you can uh, upload multiple multiple files at the same time. So I'm going to try to upload these two files. Actually, it's not letting me upload, I guess, that file again. Uh, so now we upload one more file. Okay, so I added one more file from the same project and I said, what is the relationship between these two files? And I actually did a really impressive job. So it looked at both of the files and then it said, here is the relationship and overall purpose of the project. So it correctly identifies that ingest.py handles loading documents, embedding them and persisting them to the vector store. All right, so here is different operations that it performs. And then it says that uh, the run local GPT then uses the persisted data to run a question answer, answering system. And let's say here are the key steps. So load the same embeddings as the ingest.py. So it is like ingest.py actually stores the embeddings and the model reads those. So uh, that's just pretty awesome that it's actually able to look at that and understand the relationship. This is extremely impressive given that you are able to upload multiple files at the same time and it's, it has the ability to analyze those files. Okay, uh, I actually just ran into this issue. So it says, due to unexpected capacity constraints, Cloud is unable to respond to your message. Please try again soon or get notified with when paid plans are available. It seems like they are already having some capacity issues, but that is understandable uh, because I think a lot of people are going to be testing this out. Even um, chat GPT had some issues in the beginning. Okay, so a couple of things that I actually noticed. You can uh, continue the conversations in a different session and it will actually keep track of the file that you already uploaded. So that is a pretty neat feature. So what I did was I asked it, can you implement run local GPT as an API? And it, it gave me a pretty good skeleton to work with. 
I definitely need to make some changes. Uh, but I think it's a really good start uh, for a model like this. I kind of feel like it's the chat GPT moment for Anthropic. Okay, it seems to be pretty up to date because I asked it who is the owner of Twitter. And the reply was as of July 2023, Elon Musk is the owner of Twitter. So it seems like they just completed training. So this is pretty awesome because probably you're going to get more up-to-date information uh, from this model compared to something like GPT-4 or even chat GPT if you're not using any type of plugins. All right, let's see if we can actually delete our previous conversations. So I don't see a way of doing it here, but if you come here to the top and then you can click on delete, and that will delete your previous conversation. Okay, so I uploaded the uh, Orca paper from Microsoft and I asked it to summarize the main findings of this paper. And it gave me a pretty nice summary. Now, here is what GPT-4 did using the code interpreter for exactly the same paper and same prompt. And this uh, is definitely much better compared to what uh, Claude 2 was able to provide. But overall, both of them uh, did a pretty good job. I'm going to be making a more detailed video on comparison between Claude 2 and GPT 3.5 as well as GPT 4. Okay, next, next I asked it to create a word cloud for this paper. Initially, the speed was pretty awesome, but now it's kind of taking a little bit of time. So here's what it's doing. All right, so it gave me a text description. It identified the most important words in the paper. However, it was not able to generate an image. Uh, when I did the same uh, with GPT-4, so using Code Interpreter, it's actually able to generate this image. So I'm assuming uh, it still doesn't have the ability to generate images in this chat. Okay, let's uh, quickly test its reasoning abilities. So here's a question. Mary and Jeff went to the kitchen. Then Jeff went to the park. Where is Mary? Where is Jeff, right? So, okay, so based on the provided information, it goes through a step-by-step -step process, and then it came up with the correct answer. Mary's in the kitchen, Jeff is in the park. It might seem a very simple task, however, it's not that simple for an LLM. For example, here is uh, what a GPT 3.5 thinks, right? So it's able to identify that Jeff went to the park, but it's not sure about Mary's location. Now, I asked the same question from GPT-4, and it's able to correctly say that Mary is in the kitchen and Jeff is at the park. Okay, uh, here's another one. Uh, I actually had to input it this twice because it timed out on me for the first time. So the kitchen is north of the hallway. John is hungry. John goes to the kitchen. John grabs the apple there. Daniel is hungry. Where does Daniel go? And why did John go to the kitchen? Now, again, this is a multi-step deduction that the model has to do. All right, so it came up with a step-by-step -step solution. So it says, kitchen is north of the hallway. John was hungry. Because John was hungry, he went to the kitchen, right? And then say, is the, in the kitchen, John grabbed an apple. Now, Daniel is also hungry. Now, there, we don't really explicitly say where uh, Daniel is, but uh, since he's hungry, food is at the kitchen, so he's supposed to go to the kitchen correctly identifies Daniel goes to the kitchen because he's hungry and that is where the food is right and uh, again we already know about John so it also says John went to the kitchen because he was hungry and wanted to get some food uh, in this case that's the apple now GPT 3.5 again has trouble answering this question now it's able to deduce that says Daniel is hungry so it, it would be reasonable to assume Daniel would also go to the kitchen but it says, however, the information doesn't explicitly stat and states where Daniel goes. So I guess like it is kind of correct, uh, but based on the information provided, you would assume that it should say that Daniel went to the kitchen as well, because that's what um, GPT-4 does. So it seems like from this quick test that Claude 2 is definitely superior to chat GPT. However, uh, I don't know like how good it is compared to GPT-4. Uh, I'm going to be doing a more comprehensive testing between these two models. This was a very quick look at the Cloud 2. Now, a few things just to highlight. First, it's publicly available to everybody. It has some features which are similar to Code Interpreter because it gives you the ability to upload your own documents 
and especially you can upload multiple documents at the same time. Uh, that's a pretty great feature to have. Even uh, GPT-4 doesn't have the ability yet. And the context window of 100,000 tokens. And like, I still have to test it thoroughly to see how good this is. But that in itself is actually a great advancement when it comes to large language models. If you are in the US and UK, you will have access to the model. So try it out, see how this is compared to something like ChatGPT. As I said, it's absolutely free to access at the moment. That can change at any time. During my experiments, I noticed that it timed out a couple of times. So you might run into that issue. But overall, the speed of generation is pretty good. These were my quick first impressions. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.